Hi, Wambo. Hi. Where are we? We're in Moya. Yes. And uh, this, this is our farm yes. where we do production yes. of uh, Dairy Master, mm -hmm. that is a millet, and Atra Grace, mm -hmm. which is a sorghum yes. forage yes. for our dairy animals. Yeah. So today we are going to learn the five yeah. things you need to know or you need to consider yeah. for you to get that maximum yield. Yeah. So the first one that is very important is on seed selection. Mm -hmm. You need to know which seed do I need to do. And this time, today we are learning about the forage, um, that is the sorghum and millet. Yes. I know most farmers, they are used to maize, mm -hmm. but of late, because of the high cost of the protein in the market mm -hmm. for making the daily meal and so, farmers, are, they are so much interested on the forages, the sorghum and millet. Yes. So, we have said you start with seed selection, that is number one, mm -hmm. it is very important, yes. so that you don't plant the grain sorghum of which we are looking for the forage sorghum. Yes. The next thing that is very important is the ecological zone. You need to know where am I planting. Yes. Because the two, they do well in warmer areas that is low to medium altitude. Mm -hmm. Please note that because when you try to plant a, a millet on highlands, they mm -hmm. don't perform well. So you really need to know where you are planting. Like this is Moya. Yes. The crop is about two months mm -hmm. and you can see it's like two meters high yeah. or tall. Yeah, from so, front yeah. Top, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, that means it is doing so well, especially mm -hmm. in warm areas. Mm -hmm. Another thing you need to consider, they, are, they have the trait of drought tolerance. Yeah. So in case you don't have enough water, you still harvest the same. So number three, what you need to consider is your soil. You need to ensure your soil, either you have done the testing of the soil, mm -hmm. nutritionally the soil is okay, mm -hmm. it's not too acidic, mm -hmm. it's uh, not too basic um, or alkaline, mm -hmm. so that you ensure you get a good yield of your crop. And bearing in mind we are looking for the, 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 the leafy material or the forage, we need high nitrogen. So your soil with high, uh, I, I mean, high nitrogen value or you need to supplement with like CAN or something like that or the foria, it will really help. Number four, you need to ensure you are making good uh, management of your crop. Like, is there water? Yes. Do you have, uh, do you control pests? Uh, especially for the sorghum, they're affected by the fall arm home. So you need to ensure you are controlling the same. And also ensure it is weed free so that there is not that competition with them, with the weeds. Number five, you need to know when do I harvest. Uh, when our crop is about one month, we have already top dressed. We are checking, we have controlled weed. As you can see, my crop, it does not have any weed around. Yeah. So you can do manual, mm -hmm. the, the ideal way, or you can do the selective herbicide to control, yes. especially the broad leaf mm -hmm. uh, weeds. Um, with the dairy master, as I had said, mm -hmm. this is a millet. Yes. In one and a half or two months, mm -hmm. you are able to harvest. So there is no much uh, thing you need to do in between um, other than ensuring your crop is okay. Mm -hmm. As you can see, we had planted one seed, mm -hmm. but you can see how many suckers are here. Yes. This, these are about 8 to 12. Mm -hmm. This is one seed, one seed. Uh, that's why we really recommend farmers to do the palming rate daily master because you'll be able to get about 18 16 to 20 percent of protein and another good thing about it during harvesting for you to get that maximum protein you need to know when to harvest in this case our crop is a bit uh, mature yes this is not the ideal way to harvest you harvest during the booting stage just when the, the millet is about to, to flower, if I may call it, mm -hmm. that is when you're supposed to harvest. Because for the millet, uh, the older it is, the lower the protein level that, uh, that it has. So you really need to know when to harvest. That point is very important. So that you end up with quality forage for silage making or what we are going to talk about how to use your crop. Yes. Once you harvest your crop, um, as you can see, it, uh, it is a moat uh, cutter variety. Yes. So you'll be able to harvest many times, like three times, yes. for you to get about 15 to 20 tons 
in three cuts. So you can see it's a lot. When you compare a maize, previously we used to do maize, you take about three months. Once you harvest, you are done. But in this case, you are seeing like this is another crop we had harvested like a week ago. And it is ratooning. Yeah. You, you can see like this one. Yeah, wow. There are so many shoots coming up. Mm -hmm. uh, this is about a week ago. Mm -hmm. So this is the, the ideal way to do your forage because you'll be able to get maximum yield. And you can do this for like three times you still get high yield. Yes. What I can really recommend mm -hmm. after harvesting, mm -hmm. after like three days, mm -hmm. you need to apply a nitrogenous fertilizer okay. for you to boost. To get this kind of uh, sprouts. Yes. yes. So you need to apply, like, and now we are supposed to do um, the nitrogen fertilizer here, like CAN, mm -hmm. uh, for us to get more shoots and for our crop to, to grow taller. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so at, at, at how many days do I, uh, from planting to harvesting? From planting to harvesting for this variety, the mm -hmm. master, mm -hmm. it's a palm millet. It is between 45 days to 60. Now, uh, how much am I expecting at, uh, uh, how much yield am I expecting at harvesting? If you do the proper management. The first harvest, eh? Uh, you can get uh, around 15 to 20 tons. 15 to 20 tons? Yes. That's the first cut. Three cuts. The first, yeah, the first harvest. Yeah. After planting. Yeah, so you can divide that one by three. Okay. Yeah. So that, that doesn't change after the, the, the it has uh, more suckers. Uh, the with your management yeah. that's oh, what, that that's what matters yeah how you are going to manage whether there is water mm -hmm. you have fertilizers and also you are controlling with yes so i see the stocks are not as uh, as heavy as the uh, maize stocks mm -hmm. so can i be able to bail this like you know, we normally do it hey, with the uh, bomarots yes yes yeah. actually there are like three ways mm -hmm. in which you can uh, preserve or you can feed your livestock yes. from this mm -hmm. number one you can give it when it is green. Yes, or cut and carry. Yeah, mm -hmm. but you need to wait for at least two hours mm -hmm. for the prussic acid to go down. Yes. So you need to wait for, after cutting, wait for two hours, then feed the animals. Okay. Uh, another thing, you can dry mm -hmm. uh, and preserve as hay. Mm -hmm. All you can do syringe. Mm -hmm. Most farmers currently, they are doing syringe, mm -hmm. especially when you have enough rains, you can do syringe and then you can be able to have enough food during the dry season. Nice. Yeah. Now, we have already done the dairy master, mm -hmm. which is uh, high in protein. Mm -hmm. And now we want to look at how, how do we get the energy? Because we normally plant the two, mm -hmm. the palm millet, uh, which is the dairy master, mm -hmm. and we normally do the atragres, which yes. is the forage sorghum. Mm -hmm. And uh, the ideal way you do the two, so that when you're doing your silage, mm -hmm. you can even mix the two. Yes. Like for the sorghum, mm -hmm. you do 70% mm -hmm. and then you do that percent of the dairy master, which is the millet. Yes. So that when you're feeding animals, you have something that is a complete, like a balanced diet. And they have a lot of energy. So when you're doing even our silage, we don't need to add molasses. So let's look at how do we plant our sorghum, which is at mm -hmm. Same way we planted our dairy master, the spacing from seed to seed, uh, about five to ten centimeters because they'll give you more suckers about four to eight suckers mm -hmm. so during planting per acre you do like two bags of high p mm -hmm. nadap or planting the fertilizer that you used to do uh, maize production is mm -hmm. the same two bags and then uh, during top, top dressing you do two bags of CAN, all high nitrogenous, or as well you can do for ya. But since they, they are a high feeder, especially of nitrogen, mm -hmm. you need to do the granulated or the slow releasing fertilizer mm -hmm. with high nitrogen. Uh, from there, you do you can do weeding, and weeding it can cost you around maybe five thousand mm -hmm. manually, or you can do selective herbicide like yes. uh, the one that uh, controls the broad leaves. But for the glasses, you have to uh, do it manually. Uh, as a farmer, someone who has been doing uh, maize for silage, mm -hmm. you can ask yourself, how will I benefit if I don't do maize, mm -hmm. I do the sorghum? And remember, we said 
remember the, the growing or the ecological, it's very important. The sorghum does well in warmer areas. So that is from low to medium altitudes. Ensure you don't plant it in highlands. It will, you'll be disappointed. So if uh, you normally do maize, the difference between the two, all these ones, they have a, an upper hand or they'll give you a better, as a farmer, you benefit more as compared to someone who is doing maize. Number one, we said the, um, the maturity period is shorter. Yes. So in two and a half months, imagine you have your crop ready. This one has already overgrown. Yes. You, you normally harvest it during the booting stage. Mm -hmm. uh, when we have, when this head is not like this, mm -hmm. and then the, the, the grains, they are at milk stage. That's the ideal way to harvest your atra grains. It's called the booting stage. That's when you get maximum protein and energy or sugar from the same. And this one, you get about 16 to 18% bricks, which is a lot. Another good thing I have noted, mm -hmm. it has a brown midrib, or the stem looks like a bit brown. Mm -hmm. And this feature, it makes it more palatable to your livestock. So you find when you feed your livestock, they consume like everything. Now... Another good uh, or the other advantage that you have, if you have planted sorghum compared to maize, you'll plant and harvest several times, like three times. As you can see now, this is a crop that we had harvested like a week ago. Mm -hmm. You can see you get so many shoots. Yeah. So it, it'll, uh, it will give you more shoots yes. after harvesting. Mm -hmm. You just need to manage yes. the way you have started with the planting. Mm -hmm. Now you continue managing the younger crop. Yes. and you harvest for all that time. So for you to go back to the shop again, it can take you even maybe three cuts or four cuts. That's a year. Yeah, and yeah, depending with your management. If, you, if you're doing uh, irrigation. Yes, So yes. can it handle uh, food traffic? Can I graze in it? You can. Mm -hmm. Actually, there are so many ways you can plant the same. Yes. You can intercrop mm -hmm. with others. Mm -hmm. um, like if you have Lord's glass or any other fodder, yes, you can as well plant in the field and leave it for your animals to graze. But yes. we normally recommend mm -hmm. uh, to ensure the crop is a bit older. Yes, all you cut and uh, let it wilt for a while, mm -hmm. then you feed the animals. Okay. Because when the crop is young, like this one, when you feed the animals, you end up with so many issues. So ensure your crop has matured mm -hmm. for you to feed. Also for you to get return on investment. Mm -hmm. Because feeding your cows or your animals with such a young crop, yes. it's, a, it's a loss. So you, you really need to ensure yes. your crop has grown. Nice. Yeah. And you can get, between Faranica, you can get about 40 to 45 tons mm -hmm. of the same for the three cuts. For the three cuts. Yeah. And it's very affordable. And also there are smaller packs. So yes. in case you are a smaller farmer, yes. you can do that. But for an acre, for yeah. the atra grace, you need 5 kgs. 5 kgs. That is for an acre. Mm -hmm. And remember the spacing. Yes. Yeah. Another question I've seen farmers ask uh, uh, is, can you plant and transplant? Transplanting is very tedious. Yes. And you lose most of your, your seed. Yes. The ideal way is, just be king during the planting because yes. it's something you're doing like once per year mm -hmm. and ensure the spacing is correct mm -hmm. for you to get uh, maximum yield. So, Wambo, you're an, ag an agronomist. Yes. What do you exactly do? I normally advise farmers. Yes. I'm so passionate about farming. Uh -huh. So, I have farmers reach out ask, uh, and they ask, what can I do on this and this? Where do I plant or how do I get this seed? Yes. So, that's what I normally do yes. on daily basis. Mm -hmm. But I'm also a farmer. Yes. I do farming. Most importantly. Yes. You're a farmer. Yes. So how can I find you? How can we find you? Thank you for that question. Mm -hmm. You can find me um, in my YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. Please, guys, come and subscribe. <laughs> uh, my name is Wambo, yes. Agronomist Kenya. Yes. Ut on YouTube. Yes. I'll link the, uh, the YouTube channel on the description box. Thank you. Yeah. You can also find me on TikTok. I'm very active. Wambo Crop Agronomist. Yes. And uh, you can get me also on Instagram, the same? Yes. Yeah.